Hello, and welcome to another episode of Metal Effort. My name's Nehemiah, and today we're going to be looking at this piece of metal, the Reich 1507T, T for Tonto. So let's get into some size comparisons. I've got the old paramilitary two, which this is actually a little bit longer in the blade, about the same size overall. If we go butt to butt, about the same. But that blade length, this is a beast. Uh, notice, I got little red brothers here. Uh, this is from the St. Nick Knives. I might do a video on that one. I don't know. I want to do some steel testing. Next, we have it compared to the old busker, something that's a little bit smaller. And then, what is still one of my favorite knives, the TRM Neutron. Which, uh, PSA, you could put a Benchmade clip on there, and it works perfectly fine, which I like. This is like extra, extra deep carry. Next, we'll do a little weigh-in, and we'll close it. Boop. 3.97, about 4 ounces, which might seem a little heavy, but it's still under an ounce, an inch, almost, or right about. This is like 3.75 in the blade, so a little bit heavier than that, but not too bad, not too bad. So let's get into our dent, the decent, the excellent, the nitpicks, and the terrible of this hunk of knife. Now, one thing to note, this is not a standard issue 1507T. This has got two mods, which I'll talk about when I get to them. Uh, this isn't, I guess, an official review because I'm not reviewing a normal stock version of a 1507T, but there's some really good reviews out there. The couple nitpicks of this knife, uh, the person that treated me this knife, uh, sought out to kind of take care of those issues, and we'll see if it did the job. First thing I want to talk about is just the thin profile. In your pocket, this thing is incredibly thin. I mean, comparing it to, like sizable, you know, friend of a EDC champ like the PM2, like in the pocket, <laughs> like even including the flipper tab, like as the profile, the PM, uh, yeah, the PM2 is just way bigger. Uh, even, even the <laughs> Neutron is wider than this knife, which is nuts. So that combined with a very deep carry pocket, clip and this very subtle flipper tab this doesn't take up a lot of room it's very long so if you got like shallow pockets it might not work for you but it's not going to dominate your pocket like most bigger knives would which is awesome so does the clip work happy to report it does it works very well you can see here the there's like a little cutout for it to go in and i actually like this because it makes the whole width of the knife a lot less. Like you don't have to have the clip writing on the outside of the body. And so this saves a little bit. It's still got enough of a little lip here to get your pants in on. And it's just, it's a really good clip. It's extremely deep carry. It's long enough, which you do need on something that's this big and long. Uh, but it looks, looks great, works great, A+. Plus. The steel on this which you can't see on the blade we'll get to that in a little bit but normally be printed right here is cts 204p which is a same same thing as m390 and 20 cv excellent steels for pocket knives those three steels are my favorite which is great uh there is another version of this knife the 1507s which i assume means like standard on that knife, which is a little bit cheaper too, I'll, I'll talk more about that later, that's running on S35 Yen, so there's different steel options depending on how much you want to pay and what kind of steels you're looking to get. But can't complain about 204P, which is great. And then just the general shape of the blade. Now this is the T model, which is T for Tonto. This is a very distinct and obvious blade shape Basically, the whole thing is just a straight edge until you get to the point. I I like Tonto. Uh, I think it's pretty useful. 
the only knock I really have against it is it just looks a little murdery. There's a couple times where I whipped the knife out and people couldn't help but raise their eyebrows a little bit. <laughs> so I feel like I need to warn them. They're like, hey, I'm opening up my tool. Don't get scared. That Tonto blade doesn't do me any favors in that regard. But as far as being a tool, it's very effective at whatever you need to cut with. The interesting thing about this knife is this not a thumb stud, I, I want to call it like a stop stud design where it, it stops the blade on both ends. So there's no internal stop pin. Instead, the knife blade rests on these two little stop studs when the blade is closed and then when it's open, they kind of curve up into this little holster here thing for it. And so I really like this design. I'm I'm a little worried with, you know, stuff getting caught up, you know, in the blade blade cutting path is like the only knock against it. But the blade is so stinking long that it's not very often that this amount of blade is not going to get the job done. And it does curve a little bit, so like foam or something isn't going to be too much of a problem. You can work around it. The reason I like it is it gives it a very distinct aesthetic, but it's also very effective. I think having the bolsters on either side, the stop pin not only stops the blade, or the stop studs, I should say, but I, I feel like it it actually kind of reinforces the blade. There's like no blade play. It would be very difficult for this blade to have any blade play because the way that it's designed where you've got support on both sides. I also like it's very clean on the inside here. You normally have the either an internal one, which some knives do, uh, but most have one in the back. I mean, like our, our PM2 here, there's the stop pin right there. Right here is just clean, elegant, kind of swooping. I like it. Very, very useful, aesthetic, and uh, innovative, you might say. The, I've already mentioned it, the, the flipper tab is very low profile, but it's very effective. There's just the right amount of jimping. It's not too sharp. It's uh, chamfered on both sides, or I guess all three sides, I should say. So no matter how you're getting, coming at that, it's not an issue, and it's easy to get purchase, and wham, blade comes out. Not a problem. And as far as being like a pocket pecker, it's not really that bad. It's this angle of the knife, It's it's just not not an issue and I don't know I like flipper tabs but I don't I don't want them to be like awkwardly placed or take up too much space in your pocket and this is a great like middle ground where it's effective but not overbearing the lanyard tube hole is one of those lanyard tube holes that again I really like because I don't know it's there unless I'm looking for it so you got a punch hole on this side and then it would loop out the back Otherwise, you wouldn't really notice it. It's not taking up any extra space really on the knife. And I don't feel like frustrated that there's a lanyard hole. Like a pair of three would be. <laughs> like, ugh, just take it out. Anyway, next thing is the two mods. So first mod is more just uh, aesthetic one that I'll mention. This is the Mahi Mahi finish by Survival TI. Uh, the person I traded it from said that was about a $100 uh, anodizing job. Looks like it was dual anodized, purple and then green on top. He said it was originally just like in the nude. It, w it didn't have any finish on it at all and he wanted to pimp it out. I actually really like this. I'm gonna see if I can maybe zoom in a little. So what happens is inevitably you're going to get some scratches and stuff and usually those snail trails are just an eyesore but on this it kind of adds to the aesthetic because that top layer that green layer is coming off and then you just see the purple underneath so until you start working yourself through the purple part i think this is a really good you know kind of a stone wash finish and then the anodizing on top it ages well usually anodization it just it looks really bad once it starts to come off i think this is a good way to do it the dual anodizing is a good kind of workaround for it you can see it's birthday here april 2016. 
And then the second kind of modification is this blade. So the biggest knock against the 1507 is that it was extremely thick behind the edge and had a very obtuse angle uh, for the actual apex. Uh, so the person that had this knife before got it reground. It was by Razor Edge Knives, did the regrind. And as you can see, this sucker is a laser. It cuts like crazy. Let me get a piece of paper for you. This is just a pleasure to cut. I mean, I can do like S-shaped movements and it's not even like a problem. I can do some churns. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this really took care of the grind. I mean, the grind was like 30, I think is what people were saying. Um, and this is more like 15 on each side. And so with a really tall grind, I th this is just a cutting machine. So that was the biggest thing that was keeping me away from like buying this knife if I was to purchase like a new one, which is still available. Even though this knife came out a couple years ago, you can go to Blade HQ and they have them for like the standard price. The T model is $350. The S model, which has a traditional just like drop point blade and the S35VN is $280. So you can get these. Just the weakest part about that is the kind of obtuse angle. I, I'm into sharpening knives myself. I'm not really into reprofiling them, at least not yet. Maybe I'll get into that someday, but keep that in mind. If you're actually gonna use this sucker to cut and not just be like a safe queen, you might wanna look into getting the regrind done if everything else about this knife is speaking to you. The last thing I wanna talk about in the positive section is the excellent. Um, the excellent about this knife is just the tight tolerances and the fit and finish. So. Included in this is the action. The action is amazing. It's very well di dialed in. It was working pretty good when I got it and I cleaned it out and lubed it up again and it got even better. As far as like fall shittiness, it doesn't take much. Smooth as butter, comes out really strong, reliable every time, and it's just a pleasure to use. So really happy about the action, but then you factor that in and look at the tight tolerances here. Like at first I was like, is that touching the side? And it's not, I mean, let's see if I can maybe do like a flashlight or something. Yeah, you can see it's coming through on both sides, no problem. And just right here, you can tell there's such little room for error. I mean, it's being nestled in there like perfectly right in the middle of the knife, which is really impressive. I mean, it sits in, the blade is like completely covered all the way up until here. Uh, it's just deep inside. And then you'll notice if it's open, there's a little cutout right there on the back spacer just to make sure that the blade isn't coming in contact with that back spacer. So all in all, very tight fit and finish. There's no way that you can cut your finger here. Uh, the only thing I would say is the knife is bigger than usual. You see this cut right here. That was for me opening the knife and this part gouged me on the other hand. <laughs> like I just didn't give it enough like clearance. And so I'm, I'm an idiot, but the knife is big and fast and furious. So even coming down this way, it's, it's sharp with that regrind. All right, so let's go into the nitpicks. I just have a few things. The clip is awesome with one exception, and that's this corner right here. So this side is pretty rounded. You can see here, pretty rounded, not bad. This part is quite sharp. So it normally wouldn't matter that much, like when it's in your pocket, who cares? When you take it out, it doesn't hurt. It's only when you go to open the knife, you actually have that part of the clip is in your hand somewhere to like hold it 
And so it's not that bad, and it definitely depends on the size of your hand. But every once in a while, I jab that into my like palm. I'm like, ouchie. I would, I would just grind that down, but obviously it's gonna ruin the finish. But that is like literally the only like unchamfered thing that should be chamfered that causes any issue with ergos. The ergos are great, otherwise. Um, next thing, there is quite a lot of lock stick on this, so. When I took a when I took the knife apart, I did the old trick. I uh, let's see if we could pull that in. I put some some uh, permanent marker on there, some sharpie to try to erase it. And while the sharpie was on there, the lock stick was gone. But once the sharpie wore off, then the lock stick was there. It's not that bad. It's just you can kind of feel it sometimes. I think it's gonna wear in. I'm, I've been flipping it, and even since I've had it, it's gotten a lot better. It's not like I can't, I can't do it uh, one-handed or anything like that. It's not a big deal at all, but it's just there enough for me to note it. So as you can see, where the lock bar actually meets up with the blade tang, the that's that's where it's kind of pushing up against it. That'll wear in a little bit, I think, over time, and it shouldn't be a problem. As far as lockup goes, it's like at the perfect spot, maybe 25%, which is perfectly fine. Not an issue. I would say, like, as far as lockstick goes, it's just barely enough for me to mention it. Any less, and I wouldn't even think about it, notice it, or mention it at all. So, not too bad, not too bad. And then the last nitpick I have is just the price that I talked about. So. With the Tonto blade and the 204P, you're looking at 350. That's, you know, you can get a lot of knife for 350. And factoring in the grind. If you if you're gonna pay for a hundred dollar grind on top of that, this isn't really that cheap of a knife. <laughs> you're in the you're in the like Sabenza range where you know 450 for a knife is is a lot of money and you're committing yourself a lot to it. Um if you go with the S35EN, if, you, if you're not like a steel nut and you don't need like the best of the best, S35EN is still really good steel. And that knife is only 285. I th think 285 on its own is fine if you're not gonna grind it. If you're gonna get it ground, I kinda would just rather recommend, hey, get the better knife. If you're gonna spend all that money, you may as well get the better blade shape, you may as well get the better steel. Obviously, was a, a little bit of opinion on blade shape, but if you like Tonto blades and you like the steel, it might be worth it. But that's a big ask for what you're getting. I understand that, so it's hard to be able to re recommend it at that price. And then the last thing for the Terrible is just the fact that you need to grind it to really get this to be a real good cutting machine. I think if they're coming from the factory like this, this would be a no-brainer, because you wouldn't have to pay for a regrind you're getting fantastic action, you're getting premium parts, you're getting a really distinct look. Kind of looks like a Covenant weapon from Halo. Um, just the shape, obviously, the colors. And there's a lot of colors. There's, you know, green, I think. There's purple, a couple others. The purple one definitely looks like it's from the Covenant as well. But very distinct design. I like the little bit of innovation with the lock stub thumb things <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what to call them stop studs i guess it's probably the best description of what it is it's just that grind this grind for me this knife is awesome because i don't have that problem but it just means that you know i traded more for this knife i traded you know 500 dollars worth of of knife to get this with all the work put into it just as an experiment so that might not be for you um, maybe, you know, it's been a couple years, maybe the new ones have a different grind than what this one was. You know, this is number 43. It was probably pretty early on when these came out. Obviously, it's 2016. Maybe they've gotten some feedback. Maybe the grind is different now. I don't know. If you do know, please comment below. But as far as, you know, reviewing like a stock version, I don't really get to do this because I'm only, I'm only handling this modded version. So take all this with a grain of salt i do like it it is a recommendation as far as like just judging the knife for what the knife is in its current state this is a gem 
you just have to factor in the blade grind and the price as far as is it a gem for you. So that's it, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this review and that you find it useful in your knife purchasing endeavors. Have a good one. I'll see you next time.